You're watching the Microsoft U.S. Health and Life Sciences Confessions of Health Geeks podcast, a show that offers industry insight from the health geeks and data freaks of the U.S. Health and Life Sciences industry team. I'm your host, Claire Bonacy. Hi, Jamie, and welcome to the podcast. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me today, Claire. I'm very excited to uh, speak with you here today. Yeah, I'm really excited to hear a little bit more about your journey. So you were named a top 50 technical visionary by Intercon. Talk to me just a little bit more about how you have been so influential as that technical visionary. So I'm very proud of winning this award of the te top 50 technical visionary by Intercon. I'll be headed to Las Vegas the week of June 21st to pick up this award. I've been doing a lot of uh, interesting, cool, meaningful work over the last few years. But primarily, I've been the ATS for a large EMR company, and we've been helping them leverage the Microsoft Clouds. I've been doing this since the end of 2014, and currently we're helping them build their mission of building a connected community of health. Over the years, we've helped them modernize their offerings and bring new cloud-borne solutions to market. And uh, for their clinical applications as well as their payer life sciences application. Currently, we're helping them build a broad next generation platform of health that we're very excited about, uh, myself and the accounting. However, in addition to working on this one customer as an ATS, which is my day job, I take on a few uh, extracurricular pr projects that I get very excited about and very proud of. For one, I co-founded and co-lead the SQL Server user group in New Jersey since 2012 with Linda Zhang, who is a CSA on our national team. We do this together where we feel that we provide free technical education to our local community, leveraging resources that Linda and I have access through through Microsoft. So it's a little bit of sharing uh, with a broader public community where we have access. So we've been doing that for almost 10 years or almost nine years, I should say. Uh, additionally, I also help provide guidance to several advisory boards, including a few Microsoft partners, one of which is Cogni, which is a startup out of Israel that does um, that does cybersecurity and plugs onto our EMS E5 really nicely, and another firm called Divergent, which is a uh, systems integrator, a Microsoft systems integrator uh, focused on healthcare. Uh, last year or the year before, I was also on the Rutgers University's Disruptive Innovation Program Advisory Board, and it was always a lifelong ambition of mine to teach at the college level. And through this, I was able to be a guest lecturer through my involvement at Rutgers. So I was able to check the box and say, yes, I have taught at a college in one way, manner, or fashion. Uh, additionally, I'm also very active in our local HIMSS and HFMA chapters, and uh, been on the board of New Jersey HIMSS for the past year. And that's been great because I've met very interesting people. I've had the opportunity to amplify education in the local healthcare community, evangelize Microsoft, and especially hosting a few industry events at our New York office. At the end of the day, I really enjoy making an impact across the industry and seeing how someone like me, just kind of that suburban kid from New Jersey, can positively influence others. This is developed as a passion and a calling that is very fulfilling because I really do enjoy helping others with their development and at such a large scale. Wow, Jamie, it, it does seem like you really deserve this award. I, I don't know how you have, you know, so much time in the day to get everything done. I, I can't believe you're doing so much. And, you know, you've, you've always described yourself as that very shy, kind of suburban, humble kid from New Jersey. So what has really enabled you to, to do all of this, to put yourself out there and to get this award and do so much with your time? Time management's always a challenge. I have a family and, you know, Microsoft keeps me busy with my day job, but I just enjoy this so much. It's developed into a hobby. So with most things that are hobbies, you make time for them outside of your normal uh, working hours or even family time. Um, the way I was able to just do this and find it inside of me is uh, just pushing myself and knowing there's more to life by watching others in the world. You know, it's better than just working a nine to five job, raising a family, which is great. You know, a lot of us do that. And that's kind of like the table stakes that you have to first achieve. But after that, I was like, how else can I make a huge or a very large impact in the world, even though I'm shy and I'm quiet. And I've never really uh, had any special upbringing for this. I just continue to push myself. And by gaining a lot of experience in my adult life, meeting many people and traveling, I just saw there was more to life, happiness and passion than what I previously expected and thought and said, you know, why can't I do that? You know, I see other people doing this. What's it gonna take for me to do that? And what was interesting in my journey was every time I did something, I was so happy and proud and satisfied and that led me to say, so what's next and what's next? And over the course of time, you know, like I said, I'm very uh, 
motivated by making an impact in the world, the impacts have gotten larger. And here's a few examples of what I did. Uh, as an example, like before I worked at Microsoft, I enjoyed intending, attending the SQL Server user groups and never even thought I could speak at one. But, you know, with the help of Microsoft and pushing myself and really having a lot of self-reflection, not only did I speak at a user group and then at TechReady, but now I'm co-leading a user group with Linda and I help others run their own user groups and events. And I've turned into a mentor for user group leaders, never mind just barely speaking at one. Another great story, and I, I think this is kind of almost funny. When I first spoke at Tech Ready in 2009, I did so horribly. I had no energy as a presenter, and the feedback was rough. You know how we at Tech Ready and Ready and all these events, they, you have to fill out the feedback. The feedback on me, swear to God, was Jamie probably shouldn't speak again at Tech Ready. That was 2009. And, you know, that's kind of devastating to see and read, like, wow, you're, you're, you're kind of really that bad, right? But then we fast forward to 2016, 2017, and I spoke at Tech Ready again, and I had the highest rated BI Chalk Talk at Tech Ready in 2016, the summer of 2016. Mm -hmm. And then I also did a promo video for Comball. So this is just a great example of not giving up and persisting in my evolution and wanting to make an impact and grow, right? So you have a small setback, you just uh, have some self-reflection, what can you do better next time? And you keep, keep uh, swinging the bat and go for another at bat. Well, that's so true. And I love that you're so motivated. You know, you keep you keep yourself going and the motivation, it really it's contagious when talking to you, Jamie. So as you said, you know, what are what are your plans? What are you going to do next? What are you thinking about for the for the future? So one thing I, is I, th I think one thing that really motivates me is that I get bored easily. Like if there's nothing to do and on a Saturday afternoon, I hate just sitting around the house watching TV. I always have to have something to do. So I think that's what really motivates me. Like you said, uh, Oh, I'm always busy doing something, but yeah, I'm going to continue to find new things to contribute to scale my influence in healthcare and other professional passions. I'm a big data guy. I grew up at Microsoft as a data uh, data uh, consultant in MCS. I was a data platform TSP, uh, so I really enjoy data. I enjoy healthcare. I love seeing how I broadly can help others across the industry. Uh, recently, I invested in an AI sports startup called iSportistics that I'm helping grow, which combines my passions for tech, for data, and ice hockey, which I love. I played as a kid, and now I coach my son. I'm a, a certified USA hockey coach. Uh, go Islanders. They're doing really well in the playoffs this year. Um, additionally, I continue to look for more organizations to contribute to, such as the HIMSS and the HFMAs. Now I'm starting to be more active in Chime. I also take on some small extracurricular projects that I have had a large impact in, such as helping a friend organize a SQL Saturday event for the country of Haiti, that was conducted in three languages back in March. I personally have no tie to Haiti. I had a friend who I um, kind of mentored through the user group. I said, you know, I'm Haitian. I'd love to give back to my community in Haiti. Can you help me just figure this out? And I kind of mentored him through this and we had a very successful uh, SQL Saturday. I just love working on complex, large scale ideas and keep my eyes open to create more opportunities to keep doing this. That's great. I mean, you, you're doing so much and it sounds like you're going to continue doing more and more. So I'm really excited to follow up with you in a few months and see what else you've accomplished. So I guess, you know, what last few minutes, what advice would you share with others? Just keep your passion. Just use your passion. Keep to your passion. Keep pushing yourself forward. Um, my father was very influential on me. He always would push me to, uh, he would push me to put myself out there more, um, to do more with my life. I was the first in my family to graduate college. My mom's an immigrant. I grew from, from a very insular family. So I think my parents a little bit pushed me to just do more, uh, whatever that meant. <clears throat> and then once I got out in the world, I just saw that, hey, <clears throat> there's things that everyone's passionate about and just continue following your passion. You know, my advice for people is to search in, inside themselves for their passions and ambitions and determine how to express them for the betterment of themselves and others. Um, the other thing that I think is important is just self-reflection. Took me a good time, good amount of time to do self-reflection and it changes over time. It's a progression. What I was thinking about five years ago about myself, 10 years ago, 20 years ago has changed. So I think uh, putting some time in to really reflect on yourself is very important. It's an evolution that took time to get to where I am today and there's no doubt it will continue to evolve through my life. Great. Well, thank you so much, Jamie. I think that is great advice for anyone listening. And I definitely, I think I'll be implementing that myself as well. So thank you again for being part of the podcast. And I'd love to follow up with you in the future. Great. Thanks, Claire. Thanks for having me.
Thank you all for watching. Please feel free to leave us questions or comments below and check back soon for more content from the HLS industry team.